You already know what you're in for. Welcome back to Most Amazing. Here are the top 10 terrifying paradoxes that keep scientists awake at night. And you'll probably stay awake after these as well. Let's dive in. Number 10, the Raven's Paradox. Okay, you may have heard of this one before. It's also referred to as the Hempel's Paradox. It was first proposed in the 1940s from a German logician. I was a fun magician and logicians, a lot of issues in this one. I was a promising start. The Raven Paradox begins with a singular true statement, as most of these do. The statement here is that all ravens are black. Remember that, got it? Great. Now, what follows here in the world of paradoxes is a contrapositive statement. For example, Hempel then makes a statement saying that everything that is not black is not a raven. Now, both of these things are true in this degree of things, right? Hempel believes that whenever we see a raven, it will be black, providing support for his initial statement. That's not going anywhere, right? Keep that in the back of your head. But then when we see something that isn't black, like a banana, we use that first statement to back this up. The banana is definitely not black, therefore it's for sure not a raven. This paradox Hempel sprung upon us provides evidence, even if it's totally unrelated that ravens are black. He's pushing the limits with how far one statement can go. Also, this is one out of 10 paradoxes, so if you're already confused, buckle up, because my brain already hurts, and I wrote the thing. Number nine. Galileo's paradox of the infinite. Okay, we're already getting into numbers and we're only at point number nine. Lovely. Back in 1638, Galileo proposed a mathematic paradox. It was in his final written work and discourses and mathematical demonstrations relating to the two new sciences. It goes new moon, that one, and then eclipse. It's, you really gotta, quite the page turner, that one. But in it, Galileo proposed this paradox based on the relationship between sets of numbers. Like for example, we have square numbers. One, four, nine, 16, 25, so on and dan forth. But we also have the other group, the non-square numbers, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, ten. 10. So now the total of square numbers must be less than the total of non-square and square numbers combined because every positive number has to have a corresponding square and vice versa. So there really can't be more than one or the other. So Galileo concludes that concepts like more, less, or fewer, those can only work with finite sets of numbers. So when your little sibling says, nah, infinity, and then you try and one-up them by saying, nah, infinity squared, buddy, you're out. Little bro gets shotgun. See ya. Number eight the crocodile paradox. This next one is one of those paradoxes that you think about for like a week and then it sneaks back up on you and then you think about it. Okay, here we go. A crocodile snatches a young boy from a riverbank. His mother pleads with the crocodile to return him to which the crocodile replies that he will only return the boy safely if the mother can guess correctly whether or not he will indeed return the boy. I'm gonna let you Think on that for a second. So there's no problem if the mother guesses that the crocodile will return him. If she's right, he's returned. But if she's wrong, the crocodile keeps him. If she answers that the crocodile will not return him, however, we end up with a paradox. If she is right and the crocodile never intended to return her child in the first place, then the crocodile then has to return him. But in doing so, breaks his original word and contradicts the mother's answer. On the other hand, if she is wrong and the crocodile actually did intend to return the boy, the crocodile must then keep him even though he intended not to, thereby also breaking his word. This is similar to the Pinocchio nose growing paradox. I didn't include it because it's pretty common, but the same logic applies here. This is an old paradox. The term crocodileite was used to refer to anything confusing like this exact dilemma. Number seven, Achilles and the tortoise. We've heard some sort of version of this one as well. The paradox of Achilles and the tortoise was originally put forward by Greek philosopher Zeno of Alea in the fifth century. So it's a bit old to say, yeah, I guess. Achilles challenges the tortoise to a foot race. Achilles gives the tortoise a head start, let's say 500 meters. So when the race begins, begins, Achilles obviously starts running at a speed much faster than the tortoise, so that by the time he's reached the 500 meter mark, the tortoise has only walked 50 meters further than him. But by the time Achilles has reached the 550 meter mark, the tortoise has also moved. Now he's at another five meters. And then by the time he's reached the 555 meter mark, the tortoise still is moving, albeit slow, he has moved another 0.5 meters. And then again, 0.25 meters, and again, 0.125 meters, and so on and so on. This process continues again and again over an infinite series of smaller and smaller distances with the tortoise always moving forward while Achilles always plays catch up. Whenever he reaches somewhere the tortoise has been, he will always have some distance left to go no matter how small it may be. The problem here is not to think of Zeno's Achilles paradox in terms of distances and races or how fast we could actually run, but rather use it as an example of how any finite value can always be divided an infinite number of times. I'll get into that a little bit more later on, but I just wanted to get this idea in your head in a way that we already have of heard before. Keep that in mind. We love using Achilles to explain things. That's really us. Number six, the card paradox. Okay, this one is fun. It'll give you a mental break for our halfway point here. The card paradox goes as following. Postcard is in your hand. On one side, it's written, the statement on the other side of this card is true. Now you turn that over and the opposite side says, the statement on the other side of this card is false. Let that, I'll, I'll let that simmer in a bit. I'll let you think about that a bit. The feeling in your tummy that makes you angry right now, that's, that's the paradox literally sinking in. Both of these statements are false. If 
one side is true, then the other must be as well. But for that side to be true, the first has to be false. This one came from British logician. Again, those logicians coming through. Philip Jourdain, that's more recent. It came in the early 1900s. But it's honestly my favorite version of the liar paradox. The crocodile paradox is neat because it's a choice, a situation, but the lighter paradox is just a confusing piece of stationery. That's it. Simple as that. Number five, Hilbert's Infinite Hotel. This paradox comes from German mathematician, David Hilbert. He was a friend of Einstein's back in the day. That's how you know you're in for a treat. He thought of the infinite hotel. Okay, basically it's a massive hotel, really big. It's got an infinite number of rooms with an infinite number of guests in said rooms. This setting helps us challenge the concept of infinity. The question that challenges this idea is what happens when somebody new comes along looking to stay the night? Hilbert's solution, if you want to call it that, is to shift everybody down one room when this happens. So you go from one room over and over and over to two and then over to three and four, you know, whatever. We'll pack our toiletries and mosey along to room four. It's easy, no problem. So you go from room one over to room two. Another guest comes along, no problem. We'll just pack our toiletries and move on to room number three. No problem, you know, enjoy your stay, don't mind the smell, we got this. But when a bus rolls up containing an infinite amount of guests, then what? Well, of course they heard about the infinite hotel, so pretty perfect, of course they're gonna stay there. Our trusty hotel manager, who is friends with Einstein, says, okay, here's a solution. Everybody move to the room number that's double your current one. That way there's an infinite amount of odd number rooms that are now available for the bus of people. This paradox is a visual version of the infinite number paradox, only now we can see it, right? It's just a big bus in front of a hotel. Lindsay Lohan would be the hotel manager. She would come in and be like, well, your stay is confirmed, just the limit doesn't exist. I don't know, this is confusing, I'm gonna quit. Number four. The Unstoppable Force Paradox. This one is a classic. If you've seen The Dark Knight, you've definitely heard this one. Heath Ledger hit us with this one mid-movie. We're like, okay, as if our brains aren't hurting enough. Classic Christopher Nolan. Basically, this paradox involves, as you may have guessed, an unstoppable force. And in this statement, such a thing exists. Colliding with an immovable object. Again, this is one of the many things that you immediately try and solve in your head. You try and make sense of it. You're like, okay, so a train hitting a big ass rock. The train would be wrecked and the rock would be cracked. In this statement, both of these are true. So now what? What does happen when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? Well, your brain hurts. That's what happens. A similar paradox here that might level it out a little bit more is a story from the third century BC in China. A merchant was selling a spear and a shield and when he was asked about the durability of both, they replied, the spear is so good it can pierce any shield and the shield is so good it can block attacks from any spear. So they're like, okay, what happens when they hit each other? And then that's when you close the book and then never look at it again. Number three the bootstrap paradox. If you came here for some time travel nonsense, well, you made it this far, let's do it. Professor David Tooney from the University of Massachusetts used this one in his book, The New Time Travelers. Imagine that a time traveler buys a copy of Hamlet from a bookstore, all right? They then travel back in time and hands that book to Shakespeare, like the Shakespeare, who then copies it out word for word, claims it as their own. Then over the centuries that follow, Hamlet is reprinted and reproduced countless times until finally a copy of it ends up back in the same original bookstore where that time traveler finds it, buys it, and then takes it back to Shakespeare. So who wrote Hamlet? Hit that thumbs up for Hamlet. Also, don't time travel. Number two, the ship of Theseus. Again, another paradox in a superhero setting. This one was used in WandaVision when, spoilers, Vision was rebuilt and brought back to life. He just pulls this out in the middle of a fight scene. He's just floating, looking at another Vision, and he brings out this paradox. The ship of Theseus goes as such. The ship returned from Crete and it had 30 oars, and its next step was to preserve the ship. So the Athenians would take out old planks after they had decayed, replacing that plank with a new, stronger one. So if this ship was replaced slowly over centuries, piece by piece, the philosopher Thomas Hobbes brought up a good point afterwards. If the original planks were collected over this time and used to build another ship, which ship, if either, is the original ship of Theseus? Part of me is like, oh, the original pieces for sure is the ship, but then those guys floating at sea right now would definitely disagree. Paradoxes, I don't know, This my brain is actually hurting. And finally, number one, you guessed it, the grandfather paradox. French journalist René Bajavel spent their days fascinating over time travel. He proposed this idea back in 1943, but even today, we're still fascinated. We're trying to play with time in all these major blockbusters. Looper, Back to the Future, Endgame. It's fun, but don't think about it too much or else you'll just sit in your car in the parking lot after the movie. Like, does that even make sense? Was that a good movie? I don't know. What if a man went back in time before his parents and killed his grandfather? Well, that means that his parents never existed, meaning that, of course, that man never existed, meaning that he never could go back in time originally to make this even happen happen. So now what? Some philosophers add to this, they add the parallel universe theory where travelers would then create a separate timeline that branches off an already existing one. In other words, this paradox is so hard that we need to create more universes. This is actually how they explain the time travel concept in Avengers Endgame. They just made other parallel universes that kind of loop together. And then we just ate popcorn and goes, that's cool. The Hulk's cool. We don't care. Time travel, all that stuff. I don't even want to think about it too much. Think about it, but 
once you click this video off, just don't think about it anymore. Guys, those are the top 10 terrifying paradoxes that keep scientists awake at night. I'm gonna stay up at night after those ones. I'm Taylor McWaters. Let us know all your thoughts in the comments, and we'll see you next time on Most Amazing Top 10.